One of the things I'm often asked is if I could do a video on Smith charts. So here's that video. Before we get started, I want to talk about a couple of things. Okay, we're going to start off by asking what is a Smith chart. And this is a depiction of a Smith chart. And you can see that it looks like a round spider web with all kinds of connectors and circles and arcs and twists and numbers. You're going to need to know more than that. So let's get started. So talking a little bit about a Smith chart, the Smith chart was invented in the 1930s by Philip H. Smith. And I take it that he was a pretty smart feller. Try saying that real fast a few times. Smith charts are used for the design and analysis of RF circuits. As amateur radio operators, some of the things that we're concerned about are impedance matching and transmission line analysis. And you can do a lot of things with Smith charts. Now, Smith charts take advantage of a normalized impedance, so they can be used in the analysis of any device, regardless of its system impedance. In amateur radio, we are typically concerned with a 50 ohm system impedance. But you could use a Smith chart with a 75 ohm system, like with audio video equipment, or a 300 or a 600 ohm system for whatever it is that you happen to be working on. Now, a Smith chart is a polar plot graph, and that means it's a big old circle. It's not a Cartesian coordinate system like we're used to in middle school math class with XY coordinates. The Smith chart is used to plot complex impedance for analysis. Now, when we talk about complex impedance, it's a combination of real resistance and imaginary reactance. We depict real resistance with a capital R and imaginary reactance with a JX. Now, when we talk about the SWR of our antenna, the SWR is derived from a complex impedance that's made up of real resistance and reactance. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But the formula that we use to calculate impedance is Z. Z is, depicts impedance. And Z equals R plus JX, meaning it equals real resistance and imaginary reactance. This is a screenshot of an antenna sweep that I did on my Nano VNA, one of my Nano VNAs. And the Nano VNA and lots of modern equipment kind of automate a lot of the things or calculations that people used to make by using Smith charts. Smith charts automated a lot of the manual calculations that folks used to make by hands with things like slide rules and calculators and abacuses, I guess, to figure out different relationships between the impedance and things that we were looking at, like SWR, reflection coefficient, for example. So in here, you can see at the top, we have a marker, marker number one, and that in brown depicted, you'll see the frequency where marker number one is, and it's 7.074500 megahertz. In yellow, you can see our SWR reading of 1.3, and that would be 1.3 to 1 SWR. And then in green, you can see our plot on the Smith chart. And what we have here is 40.7 ohms of resistance and 7.1 ohms of inductive reactance. Now, it's inductive reactance because we're north of this equator that runs through the center. But we're going to talk more about the parts of the Smith chart coming up. And here we go, we're talking about parts of the Smith chart. So a couple of things that we need to understand are that all data points above the line going through the center that I'll call the equator to make it easy to understand would be inductive in terms of reactance. Anything below that line or in the Southern hemisphere, we would call that capacitive reactance. Now the equ equator is actually called the line of pure resistance. And I'm sure somebody's got another name for it. So if you have one, go ahead and post it in the comment section below. It'll be greatly appreciated. Anywhere on that line, our inductive and capacitive reactants are canceled out. And we have what we consider a point of resonance. So resonance is when there is no reactants. And any point on that line is purely resistive. So let's talk a little bit about impedance. And if you want to learn more, I've got a video that goes through impedance in greater detail. But impedance is resistance plus reactance. I think we covered that. And there's the formula for it, and I think we covered that. So reactance is dependent upon frequency. So our reactance will change as we change frequency. Reactance plus capacitive or inductive reactance equals our impedance. And here we go. Resonance is when there is no reactance. And I always find it funny or amusing when amateur radio operators will stoically state, I only use resonant antennas. Well, antennas are generally only resonant on one frequency, so in my mind I'm thinking, oh, this person only operates on one frequency, probably 7200. So there's more parts of the Smith chart that we need to cover. 
So across the line of pure resistance, all the way to the left, would depict a short circuit with an infinity SWR. In the center is our matched impedance or our system impedance. Amateur radio operators use a 50 ohm impedance, so generally that is 50 ohms for us. And then all the way on the right hand side is a condition for an open circuit, which would also show you an infinity for SWR. Here's a quick diagram that I put together that depicts a typical amateur radio station. So we have our radio that feeds into a transmatch, and I'm using the word transmatch there, probably in an attempt to not upset people, but it probably will. A transmatch can be a tuner, it could be a matchbox with an LC circuit in there, or it could be something like an un un, like a 49 to 1 or a 9 to 1. Our signal comes out of the transmatch and goes forward. Sometimes it's called the incident wave. Here we're calling it forward power towards our antenna. If we have an impedance mismatch at our antenna, we typically measure what's called SWR, and we're concerned about the reflected power that comes back. Now, what will happen is, is that reflected power will come back and it will bounce off of our transmatch or tuner, or if we have a tuner in our radio off of that, and reflect back and forth like a ping pong ball until it's all been absorbed and radiated by our antenna. We do, however, incur line loss based off the coaxial cable that we're using. Here's the place in the video where people say that they use open feeder that doesn't have any loss, and that's fantastic for them. But anyhow, what I like to do, and most amateur radio operators like to do, is minimize our SWR and ensure that we get the most power that we can out of our antenna. And that's a good practice. Our SWR is made up of the impedance that we talked about earlier. And as we talked about earlier, that impedance changes with frequency. So there's actually more to resonant antennas or matched antennas than just SWR. And that's why we're having this video. So here are some more parts of a Smith chart. So the first thing I have is an arrow in blue pointing to what appears to be a circle or a semicircle. And that's called a circle of constant resistance. And they start over in the right hand side of our Smith chart and get bigger as they move to the left. Anywhere along that circle is going to have the same resistance. We use these to plot the coordinates of our complex impedance on our Smith chart. On the right hand side, I've got two orange arrows, one pointing towards our inductive constant reactance circle, and the one on the bottom is pointing towards our capacitive constant reactance circle. Some people will call these arcs, but they're actually circles that are not fully on the Smith chart. Then in the center in red, we have an SWR circle, and we're going to do an exercise where we actually create one of these SWR circles. But we do this by plotting our complex impedance drawing this circle, and any point on this circle will have the same SWR. The impedance will change with frequency, but the overall SWR will not change. So when we go to plot our impedance, we need to normalize our impedance. And there's a couple things we need to know. One is we have a 50 ohm system impedance because we're amateur radio operators acting with a 50 ohm system impedance. Then we need to know our formula, Z equals R plus JX, the formula for impedance. And then bullet number three is just some numbers that I made up because they're easy math. And so in this case, our complex impedance is equal to 75 ohms of real resistance plus 50 ohms of inductive reactance. It would be minus 50 if it was capacitive reactance, but in this case, we're using inductive. Why? I like to say the word inductive more than I like to say the word capacitive. So what we need to do to normalize our system impedance is divide everything by 50. So we divide 75 by 50, our system impedance, and then we divide 50 by 50, which is our system impedance. And then we end up with an overall normalized impedance of 1.5 plus 1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot this on our Smith chart. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to plot our impedance on this Smith chart. So we're going to use our circles of resistance to find 1.5. And I believe that's going to be right around here, 1.5. So I'm just going to mark that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this arc in the positive direction. And the reason I'm doing that is because we had inductive measurements. And then I'm going to use this arc or this circle of reactance. And I need to find the one for number one. And that just so happens to be this one right here. And it comes down right here, and this is where they intersect. And so that would be our normalized impedance. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out our SWR. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use this compass and we're going to put that on our system impedance. And then we're going to put that on our normalized impedance. I hope that's a little bit too short. There we go. And then we are just going to draw our circle. And that would be our SWR circle. Now where this SWR circle crosses our equator or our line of pure resistance is going to be our SWR reading. Now at the bottom of our Smith chart, we have a scaling down here. And the scaling will allow you to do different types of measurements and different types of calculations. Now one of the things that we'll do is we can take a right angle, and this isn't exactly a right angle, but if I put that on the outer edge of my circle and draw a straight line down, this top line here is for SWR. And that's about right. So let's go ahead and draw a line on here. And then you can see that comes down and goes right through our 2.5. By drawing this line down, I can do other, I can gather other measurements like reflection coefficient, for example. Anyhow, I think that's going to wrap up this video for the basics of Smith charts. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.